Okay, guys, I'm here for another retro review. A retro review that I have had ready, note-wise and everything, and ready to film for over a month, but I just <laughs> never got the time to actually uh, film it. Till now. So, this is a little late, but eh. Today's retro review is a WWE review, and it's The King of the Ring for 1997. Took place on June the 8th, 1997, from the Providence Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. A seven-match card, so 35 totals, so 35 maximum stars is what it can get. We open with a King of the Ring semi-final match. It's Ahmed Johnson versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley, which is a rematch from a prior match in a term when Ahmed Johnson beat Hunter Hearst Helmsley, but due to injury, Hunter Hearst Helmsley got another chance in the semi to make it, and he got into the semifinals. Uh, this isn't that great a match. It, you know, Triple H wins with a pedigree, and he goes on to the finals. Then we get the second King of the Rings semifinals. It's Mankind versus Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, this is Jerry Lawler's only appearance in the King as the in the King of the Ring tournament. It was his third straight King of the uh, it was his fourth straight King of the Ring pay per view appearance in a match. It would be his last one in terms of the King of the Ring in terms of actually wrestling on. Uh, it's an, oh, it's better than the first semifinal. It's a two-star match, so it's nothing special. Mankind wins the Mandible Claw. So then we get a match between Goldust versus Crush. Goldust is, of course, newly faced, coming off of feud of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He's been a face for pretty much the entire year of 1997. But this is... He's coming off his feud of Triple H, and this was something. Uh... Crush course is the entire has the nation domination with them. Uh, not that great of a match. It's a two star match. Goldust wins with a DDT, or no, he wins with a bulldog, uh, and beats Crush. Two stars, nothing really special. So then we get a six man tag match as it's the Legion of Doom and Psycho Sid versus the Hart Foundation of Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, and Jimmy Anvil Nightheart. Uh, this is a two-and-a-half-star match, uh, so it's not a bad six-man tag, uh, but this would be Psycho Sid's final appearance in the WWE at this time, I believe. I know he didn't reserve in WCW to 99, but I think this is his last appearance in for the WWE in 97. I think. Could be wrong, but I think it is. Um, an okay six-man tag. It's an average six-man tag. Uh, the Hart Foundation wins, and when the Bulldog pins Sid, and it's that simple as that, really. It wasn't anything really special. So then we get the King of the Ring final, as it's Mankind versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the best match of the three King of the Ring matches. Uh, it's a three-star match. This match actually started the uh, feud that would go through Canadian Stampede and SummerSlam, uh, with Mankind and Triple H. Triple H, of course, is working over Mankind's neck and his ear. Uh, and Triple H eventually hits the pedigree, wins, and then he destroys the scepter over Mankind and all that. Uh, now, interesting note, Triple H was actually supposed to win the 1996 King of the Ring, but the uh, click curtain call actually prohibited that. And, of course, the 96 King of the Ring helped make Steve Austin buy the promo he cut after winning the King of the Ring. Not necessarily winning the King of the Ring tournament, the promo he cut afterward. But, yeah, three-star match. Mankind, uh, Mick Foley and Triple H actually would go on to have much better matches, including uh, Royal Rumble 2000 and their famed street fight. Uh, so then we get Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Shawn Michaels. This is a four-star match. It's the best match on here. And it's a rare occasion of it was the first time that a pair of tag team champions would actually be facing each other. Now, this would happen again. Uh, this would happen again. It was also involving Shawn Michaels. Uh, at WrestleMania 23 was another time involving Shawn Michaels that tag champions fought each other. That was when Shawn Michaels fought John Cena, because I think they were the tag team champions at the time of that match. Could be wrong, but, you know. Uh, 
this match is a no contest. The Hart Foundation, uh, it's a double disqualification, uh, because both guys just constantly beat up the referees. Uh, but a very good, solid four-star match. No real complaining here. Uh, this is a very good match. Four stars. The best match of this show. So then we get the WWE Championship match. The Undertaker versus Farouk. This is Farouk's only champ world title match in the WWE. Uh, it's a two and a half star match. It's nothing really special. Uh, this was the start of the Kane storyline. So Paul Bearer has blackmailed The Undertaker into letting him manage him. Uh, Taker would have also end up during his throwing a fireball in Paul Bearer's face. Uh, Undertaker wins by tombstoning Farouk, and he goes to continue the thing because Paul Bearer has this thing over his head. Ahmed Johnson comes in and gives Undertaker the pearl over plunge and all that. That was supposed now, that was really supposed to go to a title match that Undertaker would have with Ahmed at Canadian Stampede, but Ahmed got injured, so Vader took his place. Uh, it's a two and a half star match, nothing really special. Not a horrible match, but not the greatest. So out of 35 total stars, this show gets 17 and a half. Uh, that's actually a C. That would be a C show. Uh, so, yeah, this will be my Retro Wrestling Review playlist. Uh, if you like the video, like button is down there, subscribe button is down there. Uh, the next Retro Review will be up sometime before Christmas, hopefully. Uh, and then it might end up being the last review I do for the, uh, year. Uh, episode... 19 Power Ranger Ninja Seal review will be up probably Saturday since there's no new episode this Saturday. Uh, and that's that. And then sometime within the next couple weeks, I will have the review of the finale of Power Rangers Ninja Steel and this other retro review and a Survivor Series review. Those might be the final three videos I do. I, well, Okay, the last video I'll do will probably be the final part of Smacking the Roster Down, which I also need to do, and I will put that up. Uh, so, those will be the last four videos I do for the year, but I'm going to space them out to at least get them through till Christmas. Because uh, I always take from Christmas to New Year's, it's not going to have any new videos. That's the way it is. So, uh, like I said, this will be in my Retro Wrestling Review playlist, and thank you for watching. Bye.